MLB.com's Mike Petriello has assembled a list of 10 hitters who improved the most from 2019 to the shortened 2020 season. Jose Iglesias, Brandon Belt make the list. You can read all about it uh, on MLB.com. And Mike joins us on the Wednesday program to discuss some of the names on this list. Mike, good morning. Thanks for the time. Let's dig in on the two guys that walked away with MVP honors in both the American and National Leagues. Uh, a couple of very good first basemen in Jose Abreu and Freddie Freeman. It's hard to imagine that those two guys could have improved because they were already really good, but you have identified them as uh, among those that have. Yeah, isn't that kind of a weird list of names too, by the way? And all that is, is just looking at weighted runs created plus, you know, the fan graphs offensive metric and improvement from 19 to 20. So some of those guys, I don't think Jose Iglesias is the best hitter in baseball, but he had a nice season. The first baseman you mentioned, Abreu and Freeman, they each were obviously, you know, well above average hitters, and they kind of went off and had a really, really strong two-month stretch in 2020. Neither of those are flukes in the sense that that was good luck or they didn't earn that performance. They did. But I do look at those two guys a little differently. For Abreu, uh, he hadn't had a year like this since 2014. And when you look at the underlying metrics, the strikeout rate hasn't changed. The walk rate hasn't changed. Hard hit rate didn't really even change that much. And, you know, he's getting into his mid-30s. I sort of look at him as a guy who had a really good two month stretch that he's done before and he just never really had time to get back to the normal, you know? So great for him for having a great year. I don't look at this as like the new Jose Abreu, you know, you can see like a good year, but it was two months. He didn't get a chance to get back to normal. Freeman I look at slightly differently uh, and that was partially because of the way he talked about it. I didn't realize that for the last several years, he'd had a really painful right elbow. He'd actually had surgery on it after the 2019 season where his doctor basically said, hey, I don't know how you were even playing with this. So if he could be as good as he was, which was always a star, not necessarily a Mike Trout superstar, with a bad elbow, and we saw what he did this year, which was all completely backed up by metrics. The, it was not a fluke. You know, you can see lots of improvement here. Um, I'm kind of buying that Freeman is closer to what he just showed than I am that Abreu is. That's pretty interesting. You know, for a guy like Jose Ramirez of the Indians, uh, who really kind of hit the skids in 2019 and a lot of folks thought was in decline. It was a matter of a good three and a half weeks that really resurrected his 60 game schedule in 2020. Yeah, somewhat. I mean, if the way I looked at it was just comparing like 2019 season stats to 2020 season stats. For him, that looked like a huge improvement, but you actually need to dig a little bit deeper. You need to go back to his 2019 and realize that for the first half, he was really poor. He was in a, a big, long slump. And the second half of 2019, he came back and he crushed the ball, right? So it's actually less of an improvement than it seems. That gives me a little more credit. You can see here that 2019 second half is fantastic. That what we saw this year was quote unquote real because we already saw it starting to happen last year. And there's a good reason for it. His agent talked about this freely. When he slumped there, it was because he was trying to beat the shift. He was trying to go opposite field, which is what everybody always says. No, no, he let the shift beat him. When he gave up on that idea and started trying to pound the ball, he was successful against shift or no shift. So I'm totally in on Ramirez being quote unquote real. Hey, Mike, I'm curious. You piqued my curiosity, and you may not have looked at this already, but I'm, no, I'm confident you have because I know you're always so thorough. So I'm going to throw you a little bit of a curveball. When you were talking about uh, Abreu, you said he really didn't have a chance to correct and basically go into a slump and getting back to where he was before. I'm curious what hitter stands out, not on this group, that really struggled in these 60 games that you said, this is not who he is. He hadn't had the full season to correct that. Do you have a hitter like that in mind? Yeah, I'm glad you brought that up. I actually did the inverse of this. I wrote it this morning, the 10 guys who had poor seasons and whether you should believe those or not. And the two names at the top of that list were J.D. Martinez and Christian Yelich. I'm not worried about Yelich pretty much whatsoever. He struck out more. That was his problem, uh, but he still crushed the ball. He was like in the top 10 in hard hit rate. I think I saw an article at Fangraphs the other day that said he was weirdly Joey Gallo for a season. He's young. I'm not worried about him at all. I'm a little worried about J.D. Martinez. Now, he talked a lot about the lack of access to in-game video and how that hurt him. I don't think he's as bad as he was in 2020 for sure. The reason I'm worried, in addition to the fact he's a little bit older, is that we already saw a little bit of decline happening in 2019. He was still very good, but he wasn't nearly as good as he was in 17 or 18. So now we're going to get into next year. He's going to be a couple of years off of his last truly elite season. He'll be better than he showed. This was not the real J.D. Martinez. But I think his truly elite, like, top five hitting days might be over. 
One mm. last name from the list of improved hitters I want to hit you on is Brandon Belt, who I have uh, long claimed an AL East team should be in the market for. He had the best season of his career. I get it. It's 60 games. It's short in schedule. But at the age of 32, best OPS, highest batting average, hit with, uh, with pop last year. What beyond the traditional slash line landed Brandon Belt on your list? I agree with you. I've always loved Brandon Bell, and I have found him to be pretty underrated. And I think that's because he's the first baseman who's never even hit 20 homers. You know, and I think the park there has really swallowed him up a lot. Some injury issues as well. This year, it was a couple of things. So they did make the park a little more hitter friendly. You know, they they kind of brought in the fences and lowered them a little bit. And you saw improvement up and down the Giants lineup. It wasn't just him and it wasn't just the park. The new coaching staff gets a whole bunch of credit here. Now, the numbers you just posted there, chase rate, barrel rate, those are not really affected by the ballpark. That's what happens at the plate. That's the point of contact. That to me shows an improved hitter and one who actually, you know, the park didn't take away as many hits. I also wonder if some of the park adjusted metrics are maybe a little slow to catch up on the fact that that park is different, but I've always been in on Bell. I don't think he's quite as good as we saw this year, uh, but I'm still in on him. I, I think a lot of the improvement he showed was for real. Yeah. Now, Mike, the last thing for me, um... You know, Harold Baines was a notorious slow starter. And I always wondered why he always struggled so early. And I started thinking he played in all those years in Chicago. Then he was in Baltimore and those cold weather cities. I look at Abreu and I see we didn't start the year this year in April or May in those cold weather. We started really in the warmth for everybody. So do you factor in the weather at all with these ballpark effects? A little bit. It's kind of tough to know because you're right. We talk about guys who are slow starters. And, and why is that? Is it the weather? Is it just takes them some time to get their timing down? One of Abreu's teammates, Edwin Encarnacion, he is someone who has notoriously been considered a slow starter and he did not have a very good year at all. You know, and he's, he's 38 years old. He might not get another shot at it, but it, it's an interesting question. So when he has been a slow starter, is it because it's been cold? Well, that didn't happen this year and he still didn't have a very good year. So maybe it's due to something else. My guess is it's probably not a one size fits all thing for guys who take a minute to get going. MLB.com's Mike Petriello joining us on a Wednesday. Mike, we appreciate the visit as always, and we'll talk to you next week.